Whether you're new to a sales career and or you're already in a sales role and looking to progress your career, today I wanted to make a video about six brutally honest pieces of advice that I wish I had when I was younger on in my career. And also I might add now running this platform here on YouTube and our website, higherlevels.com. We've now coached hundreds of students at some of the best companies in the world. And there are just times where you just need to hear brutally honest advice and take it for what it is, not make any excuses and move on. So hopefully if you're in this situation, some of these points hit home. And the first point, which is arguably the biggest and the one I want you to remember the most, whether you're in a sales career already, whether you're trying to break into tech sales, you should not take advice from anyone that is not where you want to be in a couple of years. And what I mean if you're employed and also trying to break in, if you're employed, you've probably seen this now if you've been in a sales role, there's a lot of people that are willing to give advice, even those that aren't in a direct sales role, whether it's different product teams, marketing teams, enablement teams, et cetera, et cetera. You need to very carefully vet the advice that you're getting because a lot of people like to give advice and very few people have been on the front lines for any more than two to three years, if ever. I've seen some people in different departments that chime in all the time on sales calls and they've never had a direct sales role. I even had a director at a previous company I was at that had been in tech for 20 years and they actually somehow found themselves in a management position at a previous company and they had actually never been in a direct sales role. And it's really difficult if you're trying to progress your career to have some leader come to you and give you advice that you know deep down is not representative of what you should actually do. You know that it really is lacking a lot of context and you know whether they've never been in a sales role or it's been a long time for them that what they're saying isn't directly applicable to your situation. You've got to build the muscle to be able to give and take the advice where you can. And again, I'm fortunate right now to work in a situation where I have great leaders. So I'm strictly speaking to very past experience well beyond a couple of years ago, but it's very, very tempting, especially when you're early on in your career to say, oh, this person is objectively ahead of me. They have a mid-market account executive title or they have an enterprise account executive title. Let me pick their brain and see what they say. When in reality, you need to come in and be laser focused and just objectively looking at the leaderboard, looking at the results of previous years, see who is consistently at the top and really focus on getting advice from them because no advice from a mid-tier performer is better than any advice you can get. So really focus your efforts on getting advice from the most relevant people and the consistently high performing individuals in your company. And also if you're breaking into tech sales as well, I see this as well where maybe you experience rejection for the first time, you had a job reject you after you applied to five jobs and all of a sudden you're asking anyone and everyone for advice, even people that aren't in tech sales or are also trying to break in but haven't actually had success themselves. You're asking your mom, you're asking your cousin, your brother, your friend that works at a tech company but's like an accountant has never even been in sales and all of a sudden when you were starting to work along the way when you were starting to fail forward now you kind of freeze up and you're asking for yet another opinion on something that was already fine and that had you just stuck with would ultimately have gotten you to where you wanted to be my second piece of advice here and I know this is gonna be controversial having a social media channel myself but please especially if you're trying to break into tech sales Stop posting on LinkedIn. No one cares about your motivation. No one cares about your sales advice if you've never been in a sales role. And this really shoots yourself in the foot in a couple of different ways. One, if I am a sales manager or a recruiter and I see you posting motivation or something about sales advice, but you've never had a sales job before, that shows me a lot of potential risk. Like, are you gonna come in and start posting something crazy on LinkedIn when otherwise I've got 200 applicants right now that I know are willing to put their head down, that I know are focused on work explicitly as opposed to trying to get some likes here and there on LinkedIn. I really, and again, I know I'm gonna have some people that completely disagree with me here, but I think if you're going for the types of companies that our students work for, the very highly technical companies, the companies that we like to sell for because the long-term earning potential is significantly higher than the average sales job, I don't really think anyone cares about what you have to say on LinkedIn. And it also, this really shoots you in the foot because all this time you're spending trying to post on LinkedIn and get attention, you could actually be spending trying to break in, sending another application, creating another customized message that you're sending to the hiring manager of the company that you actually wanna work for that will actually get their attention as opposed to some generic LinkedIn post. I digress, ran over, I just had to get that one off my chest. The third point is that your company that you ultimately work for and the timing of which you join that company 
has a lot to do with your success and honestly, more than I would like to admit. And what I mean is when I first joined Tech Sales, I joined at a 300 person startup. I did really well. I won President's Club two years in a row, et cetera, et cetera. And I got very overconfident in my ability and went to a startup that, to be honest with you, wasn't ready for prime time. And I naively thought, hey, it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out. I'll be able to sell it. And don't get me wrong. I don't wanna downplay the necessity of being a great salesperson, but I will tell you, especially if you're early on in your career, Career, one of the best things you can do, in my opinion, is try to land at the best company possible that you can get into. Because going from a super big company to a riskier startup, that is much easier than going from a startup that may or may not work out to then go to a super big company. And I think a lot of people, again, I've seen people that work at these huge, large, very well-known companies, and they don't ultimately like it. But at a minimum, at least if you go there, you're gonna be around other high performers. And from there, if you wanna to go to a startup, you can, and it's much easier. But also don't forget that your brand, and for instance, if you go work at Amazon, like the biggest cloud computing company in the world, the only thing you've ever known is what it's like to have access to an enormous customer base that you can reach out to, that you can upsell to, that already know who Amazon is, as you're well aware. And that's the one thing I think I got way overconfident in is I worked at a great brand, a 300 person startup, but their technology, the free and open source version was used and as the default operating system for many different computers. And I got overconfident in how much that helped me even spark a conversation in the first place. So all that to say, just don't take for granted that working at a great company really opens a lot of doors for you. And it's not to say you can't go to a startup, but just don't take that for granted. Don't go work for Amazon. And if you have one amazing year, think that you're God's gift to earth when it comes to sales. And I say that only because I did that myself, if I'm being completely honest. This next one as well, for those of you in a career or trying to break in, I think I see a lot of people glamorizing the SDR role and it's great. Like you should absolutely put a lot of energy and enthusiasm into the role and you should really work hard to perfect that craft. That is a skill that's gonna carry on throughout your entire career. But I do see a lot of people, whether or not it's financially driven or status driven or whatever it might be, they just get it in their head that getting a tech sales job would be the most amazing thing in the world. And all I would say to that is just compartmentalize that your first sales job is probably going to be a job and company that you're at for like two to five years max. And that's a great thing. Don't get me wrong, but it's step one. I see a lot of people, I mean, myself included, right? When I got my first engineering job, I was making 65,000 a year. Then I got my first sales job and I was making 75. And that was great for a new college graduate. But in the grand scheme of things, if you really stick it out in tech sales and you grow your career to the enterprise level and beyond, you can be making 300,000 plus dollars easily at some of the best companies in the world. And this is what I see so many people get tripped up in. They have this like mental block that making 100K is a lot and it means they've made it and all of these different things. And it's a big milestone and I don't want you to take it for granted, but you should move on beyond that. You should be focused on that five year timeline because making $100,000 a year is still today a very fortunate place to be in, but making 300,000 plus dollars in a year is incredible and something you should really be focused on, eyes on the prize. Don't let the you know excitement of just winning that SDR role make you get complacent. Still, I think the best thing you can do is adopt a mindset when you're an SDR that you still have to prove it every day. And I will tell you now, being five years into my tech sales career, even though I've progressed very well, I've been fortunate to be in my position, I still have a huge chip on my shoulder and I'm almost afraid to let that go. But I think it has served me very well because I don't take my foot off the gas and I haven't gotten comfortable or overconfident in my ability. And in closing, my last point to those of you that are watching still, I appreciate it if you've made it this far, is you just need to do this. And this happens at every single level. I see a lot of people watching this channel that you know are like, oh, I wanna break into tech sales someday, or maybe SDRs who are like not sure, still kind of thinking like, is sales for me? All of these different things. And look, I'll tell you now being in my career for a while, also making this channel, which gives me you know a lot of attention, both good and bad sometimes, like there is always going to be self-doubt along the way. And if nothing else, ask yourself what the alternative is. I see so many people that are in an SDR role for like 12 months and they think, oh, you know, I really don't know if this is for me. Like, what else are you gonna do? Have you truly focused for the last 12 months and made this like your one objective to become insanely good at? Because I see so many people, and also this of course applies when you're breaking in, I see so many people that 
have a reason to not go all in, or they make some excuse as to why, you know, they're not sure if it's the right fit for them, when otherwise, had they had that longer term mindset in the beginning, and had they really allowed themselves for a year or two to really go hard at sales, really try to understand and master the craft and grow their career, they would really be set up well for an exponential career. And I will tell you myself, not only in the day to day, in the year to year of being in sales, especially as an account executive, there are months, six to 12 months at a time where I feel largely incompetent. And then all of a sudden, all the work you've put in, you have all these deals closed back to back, all of a sudden you're well over 100% of your number and you're getting shouted out by leadership and you don't fundamentally feel like you did anything different. And I think the same exact thing is true in tech sales as your just entire career. As you're an SDR going to AE, that is definitely a big change, don't get me wrong. But over time, you're gonna feel like you're not doing that much different. You're gonna keep improving. You're gonna kind of get used to things and get comfortable over time. If you really allow yourself to dive into the career, to really put your head down and continue to grow, you're gonna turn around in four to five years and be like, whoa, like I have a 250K plus salary. Like I had no idea that was even possible. And I see so many people just right on the cusp of that when had they otherwise committed to it, had they otherwise just done it, stop thinking about it, stop over preparing, stop over analyzing and just break in and or as an SDR, really committing to that three, give me five years and let me see what happens before I consider leaving the industry. I just think so many people would really be in a life-changing situation had they stuck with it. And I hope if nothing else, all of these different points give you the brutally honest advice you need, regardless of where you're at in your tech sales career. If you got a lot out of this video, of course, we'd appreciate a subscribe. If you have any questions or comments below, or if any of these particularly rang true, let me know in the comments below and we appreciate it. We'll see you in our next video. Thanks.